September 11th, the first thing we want to do is ask all grandparents to please stand. Today is National Grandparents Day.
this that leave in the winds and the seas away. I believe that's what the question was. What matter of man is this? That even the wind, and I wonder if I got 10 people in the house who know the matter of man that can call the seas and speak to the wind. And I wish I had 10 people in the house that can't even give God praise because you know that man. Anybody know that man? Anybody know that man that can speak to your situation? That can speak to your need? That can speak to your Anybody know that man? And you know that man. this morning. Don't fool me. I said, do I have any grateful for in the house this morning? I was saying the third time. They said the third time. The do I have any grateful for in the house this morning? You glad because God woke you up this morning? You, you glad because God started you on your way? You're grateful because you've been through some stuff, but you don't look like what you've been through. Came in this morning and said, I'm going to sit here and be quiet. Well, try to save my voice. And then y'all come in here trying to have church. <laughs> amen, amen. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Come on, give God another hand. Clap of praise. Amen. We give honor to God this morning. Amen. We give honor to Jesus, our Savior to the precious Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. We give honor to this great church, the leaders, the preachers, the officials. We give honor to you on today. And before I get started, I'd be remiss if I didn't say uh, on behalf of my, myself and my family, we just thank God so much for you all's hospitality this weekend. Amen. 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 It has been after. Amen. It has been absolutely a blessing to be able to spend time and get to know you all and share with you all. And again, you guys have treated us so well. And so we thank God uh, for your hospitality and for the opportunity uh, to even be here on today. So we thank God for you, uh, for this great church, for this great committee. Amen. You guys have looked out for us and uh, we, we have not wanted for anything. And so again, my wife, my family, I, we thank you. Amen. amen. I want to take this opportunity. I'm, I'm so glad this morning, amen, that I didn't come by myself. Amen. amen. So first, I want to give honor to my wife who's here, amen, and we, my son who's in the house. Amen. And then I got some more folk with me, y'all. I, I didn't come by myself. And so again, we thank God for those friends and family who come to share with us this morning. Can I ask those of you who come, they come from Chicago, from Cincinnati, from Indianapolis to represent us. Can I ask y'all to stay here with me? Amen. 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 As I said, I, I didn't come by myself just in case. <laughs> I felt some tension in the room yesterday when they found out I was from Chicago and a Bulls fan, so I had to call a few folk <laughs> just to make sure I had some backup this morning. <laughs> Amen. And I just want to say this real quick, we'll get to the word. And the beautiful thing is, um, as, as, we, as I look at the people who've come to support, uh, my entire ministry, time and ministry is represented uh, in the room on today. I mean, I've got... Uh, a young lady who started with me when I first started in young youth ministry who was in the house as an adult today. Amen. The team that I started in youth ministry with is here today. And uh, again, people that I serve with even today are here in the room today. So again, God is just good. Amen. 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 That's I'm telling you, there is an assignment. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. 
Amen. And it's found in the gospel according to the book of Mark. Amen. Mark chapter 5. And I'm going to encourage you this morning to keep your Bibles open. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 through 23. And then we're going to skip down to verses 35 and 36. Amen. But keep your Bibles open. Amen. Those of you who are able, can we stand in reverence of the word of God? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Word of the Lord. Mark chapter 5, starting at verse 21. If you're there, you'll see these words. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed, and she will live. Go down to verse 35. Watch this. Verse 35 says, While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who, who, me, who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken. Let me say that part again. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid. Only believe. Amen. Most gracious and eternal Father God, we come first and foremost, Lord, saying thank you. Thank you, God, for another day. Thank you for another opportunity to come into your house of worship. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for everything our eyes have seen and our ears have heard thus far. Right now, Lord, as we preach this word, Father God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would have its way. Father God, I pray that you will remove self and let your Holy Spirit do what it does, Lord. We pray that as the word goes forth, that it falls on good soil. Open the hearts, the minds, and the ears of your people that we might receive what you have for us today, God. Let something be done or said today that will draw somebody to want to ask the question, what must I do to be saved? But if you do that, we'll be mindful to give you the glory, the honor, and all of the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me see it. For the time that has been set aside for the preached word on this morning, I want to talk from the subject. When the case is closed. When the case is closed. So, two things I truly enjoy are movies and sports. But what I really love, Brother Pryor, is a good comeback story. You know, I love the movies when the main character seems to be down for the count. When their back is against the wall and it seems like it's over for them. It seems like they're about to lose. It seems like they might as well just give up. I, I love the Rocky movies where for most of the fight, he's losing the fight. He's beaten. He's bruised. And he's at the point of defeat. But then something then, then he looks out and sees the face of a lover. He hears the voice of a coach. And, and, and then y'all know the, the music that I the Tiger comes on. And, and, and all of a sudden he has this new found energy. I wish I had some. Uh, and so when he hears this, when you, when you hear the music, you know something is about to happen. Something is about to change. Right? I, I love those types of scenarios. I, I love a good sports comeback. Now let me preface this by saying this was when Jordan retired. <laughs> let me just 
preface what I'm getting ready to say. I want y'all to know that this happened when joy retired. But, but I love a good comeback story like, like the 1995 Eastern Conference Finals when the Indiana Pacers were playing the New York Knicks. <laughs> and they were down six with 18 seconds to go. And I believe that, 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 that in the, on the, the Knicks sideline, the word was, all we got to do is hold them off for a few more seconds. <laughs> but after Reggie Miller hits a three, <laughs> the situation all of a sudden changes. But the Knicks are still saying, listen, all we got to do is hold them off for a few more seconds. But can I just declare to somebody today that when you determine to do something, uh, when you're focused to do something, sometimes you can do stuff that you would normally be able to do. I wish I had some believers in here. But so y'all know the story, right? Reggie Miller scores eight points in about nine seconds. And the Indiana Pacers win that game. Something happened. But probably my favorite comeback story by Layla is found in the movie The Black Panther. Can I preach this? In the movie The Black Panther, y'all know what happens, right? T'Challa gets defeated by Killmonger and thrown off a cliff. Y'all remember that? He gets thrown off a cliff. He is presumed dead. And life went on. <laughs> it was, in fact, over for the Black Panther. The, the, the case church was closed. But what Killmonger didn't know is that the Black Panther survived that which should have killed him. Oh, somebody's going to catch this in a minute. <laughs> he survived that which should have killed him. And while folk had went on with life and forgot that he forgot all about him and had passed on, and what was happening, what, he, what they didn't know is that he was back somewhere talking with his father. <laughs> and the more he talked to his father, the more power he got. Now, the more he talked to his father, the more he reminded, was reminded that he had the spirit of a king inside him. The more he talked to his father, there should be at least 10 people in this room giving God praise right now. Because there were some situations in your life where people had They thought it was over for you. Yeah. They, they heard about the job loss and they thought for sure you were done. Yeah. They heard about the divorce and they realized that you were just about ready to give up. How many of you know that when you connected to the Father, yeah. when you are connected to the Father, I need some people in the house that don't testify because I know that there is a room full of folk in here that have come back. Stories. I know you ain't, you ain't always look how you look. I know you ain't always praying like you're praying right now. I know you ain't always live in the house you live in right now. I know you ain't always drive. I wish I had some people that keep it real again. There's some folks that got some comeback stories. You might not really be willing to tell it, but I know I'm willing to testify that I am a living witness of a comeback story. I'm not afraid to tell you where I used to be. I'm not afraid to tell you where I used to go because I know that I'm only here about the so the question is what do you do when it seems like the case is closed can you still believe God 
when the odds are against you? Can you still believe God when it doesn't look favorable? Can you still have faith to believe in God even when everybody around you thinks that what you need is impossible? Do I have any people in the house today that have that kind of faith that you can believe God even when it don't look good? You can believe God even when it don't sound good. I know it looked like the case is closed, but we just now we just talked about this. If you know that man named Jesus who was able to calm the wind and the seas and speak to things and things happen. When the case is closed. All right. So as we come to this point in the text, Jesus encounters Jairus, who is a ruler in the synagogue. Yeah. Uh, Jairus approaches Jesus because his daughter is evil. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Jairus is in our day and time would be considered the Successful. He's powerful. He's educated and he has resources. But can I stop right here and just to suggest to somebody today that no matter who you are, no matter how successful you are, no matter how much money you have in your bank account, no matter how educated you are, you are still not exempt from the troubles of life. At this moment, he's not a powerful ruler, but rather a desperate father. Somebody talk back to me. He has come to the realization, church, that his money can help. He has come to the realization that his position can help. He has come to the realization that regardless of his accomplishments and what he has, that he, just like all the rest of us, needed some help from Jesus. Can I talk? I wonder if I have any witnesses in the house today that will testify that you had some times in your life when you realize this thing is bigger than me. When you realize that I can't do it by myself. Do I have any people in the house that will testify? I had some situations in my life. I couldn't fix it on my own. I, I couldn't resolve the issue. All my education, all of my resources could not help me in this moment. I needed something a little bigger. I, I need some help from somebody a little stronger than me. And so here he is. And so sometimes our egos will allow us to humble ourselves. But I want you to watch the text. The Bible says as soon as he approaches Jesus, did y'all see that? He fell, as I always say this, he fell at his feet. Now mind you, all the people around you know who he is. They've never seen him in this kind of posture. But how many parents in the house would declare that when it comes to your babies, you do whatever it is. Y'all like to help me preach this thing. At that moment, he didn't care that they saw him in that position. See, sometimes our egos will allow us to humble ourselves enough, but in this situation, he had no other choice. Can I suggest to somebody today that if you need Jesus to move on your behalf, you might need to humble yourself and cry out to Jesus. So, before I take my seat, there's a couple of things I want to leave with you. If you find yourself in a situation where your faith is waning, when you find yourself in a situation where it seems like you're having questions and issues with your faith, can I tell you three things that you can do to help continue to keep your faith going? Can I do that and then we can go? Yeah, come on. Reason. So the first thing that we need to do to increase our faith in times when things don't necessarily look favorable is to remember what you've heard. All right. Somebody say, remember what you've heard. Remember what you've heard. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Watch this. So this desperate father finds himself standing on the shore waiting for Jesus. He is no doubt there, watch this, because of what he heard. Y'all yeah. need to help me preach this. He's where he is right now, standing on the shore waiting for Jesus because of what he heard. He heard that Jesus was passing through. He is there Jesus because what he heard about Jesus 
Jesus is that Jesus is capable. I wish I had. I, and he was there waiting on Jesus. Watch this. Remember, this is Jairus' first encounter with Jesus. They have no prior relationship. And so here he is, desperate, standing on the shore, waiting for Jesus because he heard that Jesus was passing through. But what he also heard is what Jesus was doing before he came on this side. Y'all think help me preach this thing. Uh, what he heard was that Jesus was on the other side healing folk. Uh, what he heard that Jesus was on the other side casting demons. Uh, Y'all gotta read the book. What he heard about Jesus is that Jesus is a healer. Uh, what he heard about Jesus is Jesus is able to perform miracles. What he heard about Jesus is Jesus is able to do the impossible. Uh, he heard that Jesus is able to change situations and circumstances. He heard that Jesus is able to save. So because of what he heard, he went to where he knew Jesus was going to be. So the question is, today church, what have you heard? Have you heard that Jesus is a healer? Yeah. Somebody help me here. Yeah. Have you heard that Jesus is a deliverer? Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard that Jesus is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask? Of him? Have you heard that his grace is sufficient to keep you? Have you heard that you're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ? Have you heard that you can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens you? Have you heard that you are fearfully and wonderfully? I'm just trying to help you understand. Sometimes when your faith starts to get low, you just got to remember some of the stuff that you heard. You got to remember that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not walk. You got to remember, yeah, you know I walk through the shadow of the valley of death. I will fear no evil. Why? Be what have you heard? Sometimes we forget what we heard. And sometimes we got to be reminded of the things that we've heard about Jesus. I heard that Jesus is able to do anything but fail. <laughs> what have you heard? And that's why it's important to always stay in the book so that you might be reminded of who you are. Did you hear that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you? Y'all ain't gonna help me preach this thing. I thought I was preaching to a church that knew something about. Did you hear that you have power when the Spirit comes around. Have you heard? <laughs> Have you heard? Yeah. And he says, I know the plans that I have for you. Y'all yeah, right. gonna help me preach this. I, I, let me talk, let me find a section that heard the stuff that I heard. Because I tell you right now, I'm standing here right now because of what I heard. I, I, I came to Jesus because of what I heard. The truth be told, you came to Jesus because of what you heard. Now, this man is no different. He's standing in this situation simply because of what he heard. He heard what Jesus was capable of. He realized that this is the man that I need to fix my situation. Anybody ever been in that situation where you came to the realization that uh, the doctors can't help me. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the therapist is good, but he or she can't help me. Uh, the banker can't help me. I wish I had some praise there. Sometimes you gotta come to the realization that all of that is good, but for this thing, I need Jesus. Uh, for this situation, I need Jesus. For this breakthrough, I need Jesus. For this miracle, I need Jesus. Anybody ever Remember what you heard. That's right. Sometimes your faith will begin to wane. Yeah. And then you gotta be reminded of what's on the inside of you. Mm. You gotta be reminded of who you are. And furthermore, you gotta be reminded, be reminded of who Jesus is. Yeah. Now I told y'all to keep y'all Bibles open, right? Mm -hmm. The second thing I want you to remember when your faith is impacted, when you feel it like there are challenges. Is to remember what you have seen. Can I preach this thing? I'm telling you, I feel like preaching now. Y'all haven't figured it out yet. Remember what you see. Now, notice that we skip some verses. But what happens in between time is significant. <laughs> Y'all better help me preach this. What happens in between verse 23 and verse 35 is significant. You gotta remember what 
you've seen. So watch this. So Jesus agrees to go with Jairus to his house. <laughs> now, while they are walking to his house. Oh, I feel it. Feel my help coming. While they are walking to his house. While they're on their way to his house, the Bible says that there is a multitude of people following along. But, but what happens is there's a woman in the crowd who's been dealing with this issue of blood for 12 years. Y'all know her, right? Let me remind you that they're on their way to Jairus' house. The multitude is going there. But in that moment, if you read the text, you'll find out that while the crowd was going to his house, there was a woman who decided that she needed some help from Jesus while they were on the way to his house. And so the Bible says that this woman fights through the crowd. She said, the Bible says, she said to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I, I will be made whole. Again, they're on their way to Jairus' house. But the Bible says, so y'all know what the hem of the garment is, right? So in order for her to get her breakthrough, in order for her to get her healing, in order for her to get her deliverance, she had to. She had to. Y'all ain't gonna help me push this up. In order for her to get her healing, she had to fight through the crowd. She had to get low. I'm just trying to tell you, if you really want to get something from Jesus, sometimes you gotta get. Sometimes you gotta step away from the crowd and you gotta. Sometimes you gotta make it up in your mind. It doesn't matter who you are. I gotta get to Jesus. While they're on their way. And the Bible says, she touched the human garment, and Jesus turned and said, Who touched me? He said, Who touched me? Yeah. And his disciples said, Well, all these people around here, what you mean? He said, no, that wasn't any kind of touch. Yeah. That touch has some faith yeah. attached to it. Yeah. That wasn't any kind of touch. The Bible says that virtue came from Jesus' body, which you took out. Let me say it again. They're on their way to Jairus' house. What am I trying to tell you? Listen, he was trying to get his own healing. Can I tell you, God is not too busy to stop and deal with your situation. I wish I had a prayer church in here. The assignment was something totally different. She was not the subject of healing at this time. But because of her faith, because of her determination to get to Jesus, the Bible said this thing that she has been dealing with for 12 years. Now, I wonder if I got some people in the house that have been dealing with some stuff for some time. I just need you to know that just a little faith and just a little getting on your knees might just help you get what you need. But even though Jesus was on the way to do something else, he still wasn't too busy to stop and bless this woman and heal her situation. The Bible says, he says, your faith has made you whole. So, keep in mind, Jairus is right there. And so he already had heard that Jesus was a healer. Y'all ain't gonna hear it. Y'all gonna help me out. He had already heard that Jesus was a healer. But on his way to his house, he got to see firsthand. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach this. I'm about to go home. No. On his way to, to get his help, he saw for himself that Jesus is a healer. I wonder if I got 25 people in the room that know for yourself that Jesus is a healer. It's not just because you heard it. It's because he healed you. It's because he did somebody. Yes, sir. Yes. To me. So Jairus saw firsthand that Jesus is a healer. Yeah. Sometimes you got to remember what you've seen. When your faith begins to wane, you got to look back sometimes. Yeah, can I talk? 
You got to remember what he did for you the last time I was in that situation. You got to remember what he did for you the time before that, and, and the time before that, and the time before that. Can I tell you, God is consistent with his blessings. I already told you, you would be here today if it wasn't for the grace of God. Every once in a while, you got to remember what you saw. I remember God bringing me out. I remember God making a way out of that way. I remember when the cabinets was buried and we didn't know what we was going to eat. I remember when we were standing putting chains together to figure out what we were going to do. When we were scraping chains up, <laughs> pack of ground beef, and pack of hamburger buns in a can of sloppy joe. Y'all think I'm talking back to some of y'all too saved, but I ain't ashamed to tell you that five dollar meal sometimes is all we can put together. I need some real saints in here at this point. But I remember what God is. I, I, I have a testimony of what you can see. God do. Just look in the mirror. Whenever you need to be reminded of what God is able to do, just look in the mirror. You are a product of his work. You are an example of his goodness. You are an example of his power. All you gotta do is look in the mirror. But this woman got her blessing. We talk about her sometimes. But she got her blessing on the way. Jesus was on another assignment. Y'all can hear what I just said. Jesus was on another assignment when she got her blessing. And now, Jesus, I mean, now Jairus has first-hand knowledge of who Jesus is and what he is capable of. That's right. And I'm out of here when I get y'all this third thing. The third thing you need to do is to remember who is with you. Remember who is with you. Now as we get down to verse 35, the Bible says that while he was talking to the lady, somebody came from Jairus' house and says, your daughter is dead. <laughs> says your daughter is dead. There's no need to trouble Jesus any further. Did y'all read it? point church the case is closed when we started this situation she was alive there was hope that there was a chance and as we get to verse 35 the bible says that they came and brought the news and said his daughter was dead verse 36 is where we find our thought for today y'all still got y'all bibles on okay? Because I want you to notice what Jesus said. He knows what the message was. He, he, he knows what the situation is. He, he, he knows what the circumstances. He has heard what they have told him. Y'all make him help me. But the Bible says that Jesus says. <laughs> Jesus says while he was still speaking. Oh, excuse me, verse 36. He says as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken. Watch this. He said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid. Only believe. <laughs> what do you mean? She's dead. It's over. The case is closed. What do you mean believe? But every once in a while, you find yourself in a situation you just got to remember who you with. <laughs> you got to remember who is with you. And so he's reminding him, listen, I know what they said, but remember you with me. <laughs> Now I want y'all to see what happens. 
So he says, don't, 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 don't be afraid. Only, only believe, watch this. And he permitted no one except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came, watch this, watch this. He came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and well. So in other words, they get to Jairus' house. Everybody in the house is sad and crying. He wouldn't let the multitude come in at this point. Y'all better stay with me because I'm almost done. So Jesus and the preachers go in with the father. Everybody's in the room crying. They sad because why? Because the case is closed. But watch this, watch this, watch this. Can I, can I keep reading? Can I keep reading? He says, when Jesus came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. Oh, Can I stop right here and tell you that how Jesus sees your situation is not how you see your situation? Can I tell you that Jesus sees your situation? Now, I know it looks bad to you, but can I just remind you that Jesus doesn't look at your situation the same way you do. Jesus doesn't look at it like a big deal because all he knows is all he has to do is speak a word and that situation will change. All he has to do is touch and that situation will I wish I had some praise in there. I say, sometimes you got to look at the situation the way Jesus looks at the situation. I know what it looks like in the natural eye, but in the spiritual eye, things that seem impossible are possible. Things that seem like they're not able are able. I wish I had. And so Jesus says, why y'all crying? The, the, the girl is not dead. She is just sleeping. Watch this. This is where it gets good, y'all. This, this is where I'm going to need my security. And once, once he says this, church, the Bible says they laughed at him. Y'all got to keep reading. They laughed at him. What he did next is critical for some of us in our houses and our lives right now. Watch this. The Bible says he kicked all of them out. <laughs> Can I stop right here and suggest to somebody today that in order for you to get your breakthrough, or in order for you to get your healing, in order for you to get your deliverance, sometimes you gotta kick some folk out. Now. Sometimes you gotta get them dollars from behind you. Sometimes you gotta get them haters away from you. Sometimes you gotta get them people that don't have no faith away from you. Jesus, as soon as they start that, the Bible says he kicked all of them out. Now. Sometimes the problem with you getting your breakthrough is that you got too many everybody don't need to know your business everybody don't need to know your situation everybody don't need to know your circumstance sometimes you can't let everybody in your building and sometimes you gotta do what Jesus did as soon as they demonstrated a little doubt he kicked them out the house I'm not making this up Watch this. Look, y'all want me to prove it? Look at verse 40. Verse 40 says, they ridiculed him. And when he had put them all outside. Let me say it again. Look verse 40. And they ridiculed him. But when he put them all outside. Sometimes you got to give folk out your space. If they won't believe God for your healing, if they won't believe God for your deliverance, if they won't believe God for your circumstances, you got to kick them out the room. And so here we are. Watch this. He took the father and the mother of the child and those who were with him. So in other words, mommy, daddy, and the preachers. Let me say that again. Mommy, daddy, and the preachers. Everybody didn't get the witness. <laughs> Everybody wasn't a part of it. Remember, there was a multitude with him, and then there was folk in the house. But when they got to the place where the good do it, when they got to the place where the little girl was, it was just mom, daddy, Jesus, and the preachers. I'm just trying to help you understand. Sometimes when you need to get your breakthrough, you gotta make sure you got the right people in the room. But watch this. And they entered the room where the child was lying. And this is where y'all need to get y'all shouting. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kumi, which means 
which is translated, little girl, I say, all right. So, so, so again, when we started this journey, she was sick. Uh, by the time he gets to the room, she's now dead. The case is now closed. But I just stopped by Pilgrim to let somebody know that if you let Jesus in the room, I don't care what the situation looks like. I don't care what the circumstances I don't care what the outcome. I don't care about it. But if you let Jesus in the room, all he has to do is speak a word and your situation can change. Watch this. My favorite word, if y'all don't know this, the my favorite Did y'all see this? Did y'all see the text? He took the child by the hand and said to her to leave the kumi, which is translated little girl, I'll say arise. And the Bible says in verse 42, immediately. <laughs> immediately the girl arose and walked for she was 12 years of age. And they were overcome with great amazement. So the question again today is, can you trust God even when the case is closed? I wish I had some, some praises in because let me just remind you as I take my seat that there was a time when the case was closed on you. There was a time when we were all wrapped up in sin. The case was closed. Our, our, our faith was already determined. But can I just tell you that this man named Jesus stopped by my life and changed it for me. And what was the one Pilgrim and join us 
and work for our Father God. As the praise team sings, the door will be the doors of the church will remain open. And please open your hearts and your minds to what God has brought us. And when the case is closed.
September 11th. We also, we want to also take a moment to think of the families of the members that were lost on the September 11th tragedy. We want to pray for our transition committee. Reverend Leroy Robinson, Deacon Arthur Crockett, Sister Karen Taylor, Sister Michelle Taylor, Sister Libby Browder, Sister Andrea Mitchell, Sister Karen Smith, Sister Deborah Thompson, Sister Pamela Benson. Also want to add the Pilgrim Church family. And I also want to add my mother on the list, Mother Jesse M. Humphrey. Let us go to God in prayer for a couple of minutes. Father God, we have had another wonderful time with you. And we want to thank you for being in this place with us and just bringing us joy, peace, and praise. As we close this time of worship with you, we ask you, Father God, to walk with us everywhere we go. Help us to keep your word hidden in our hearts that we may not sin against you. Be mindful of us, O Father. And have mercy on us as we grow through our struggles and hardships. For those that are on the prayer list today and for those not mentioned on the prayer list, we place them under your care. We humbly ask that you have your grace, love, and mercy on them. We humbly ask that you restore them back to you, Lord God, whether it's just restore them, period, Lord God. And if it's physical, mental, or spiritually, Lord God, we ask you to be in the midst and just heal them as they need to be healed, Father. Mm -hmm. Father God, we ask you to be comfort to the comfortless, Lord, through their time of bereavement if we have to bereave, Father. And Lord God, we just ask you for your love, guidance, and patience. We just honor and praise you, Father God, just for being just so good and so kind and so merciful. Lord God, if you would, just let, let the ones who know that, that, that they feel alone and they have no one to turn to, that you're right there with them, Lord God, the case is not closed. Lord God, just, just put your hand and your arms around Pilgrim, Lord God, and all his members here on site and virtually, Father God, and Lord God, special blessing on Reverend Simpkins and his family as they travel back to Cincinnati, Father God. Thank you for allowing him and his family to share their time with us, Lord God. And Lord God, just keep holding them in the palm of your hands. Father, before we go, Father, we want to ask you to bless our offering today, Lord God. Bless in a mighty way, Lord God. And Let's bless those who were able to give and those who were not able to give, Father. But Lord God, just enable us to use it and be good stewards over the money, Lord God, that we have provided to you. Lord God, just take care of us. Just be with us. And just walk ahead of us, beside us, and behind us. Lord God, please, please bless each household represented here today. And all these things we ask, believe, and agree. And pray in the, in the power of your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. Keep us in perfect love and peace. All these things we ask. Let everybody say amen, 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 amen. and amen.